No more, Sandra Cole thought when she woke up in her sweltering apartment. Today was the last day she would drive to work and spend her day in the company of emaciated prostitutes, addicts in the first sweaty stages of withdrawal, chronic liars, petty criminals. Today was the day she would hand in her resignation. She woke every weekday morning with the same thought. It hadn't been true yesterday. It wasn't true today. But someday it would be true. No more. She savored the idea as she showered and dressed. It kept her going through her first cup of coffee and a quick breakfast of yogurt and buttered toast. By then she had mustered the courage to face the day, to face the knowledge that nothing, after all, would change. She happened to be passing the reception area at state care when the cop brought in the boy to be registered for evaluation. The boy would be her responsibility for the next week. His folder had already been attached to her morning case list. His name was Oren Mather, and he was supposed to be nonviolent. In fact, he looked terrified. His eyes were wide and moist, and he darted his head left and right like a sparrow, scouting for predators. Sandra didn't recognize the cop who brought him in. He wasn't one of the regulars. In itself, that wasn't unusual. Delivering minor arrests to the Texas State Care Intake Facility wasn't high-prestige duty at the Houston Police Department. Oddly, though, this particular cop seemed personally concerned with his charge. The boy didn't cringe away, but pressed close to him, as if for protection. The cop kept a steady hand on his shoulder and said something Sandra couldn't hear, but which seemed to soothe the boy's anxiety. They were a study in contrasts. The cop was tall, big-bodied, but not fat, with a dark complexion, dark hair, dark eyes. The boy was six inches shorter, dressed in a prison-issue jumper that sagged over his skinny body. He was so pale, he looked like he'd been living in a cave for the past six months. The orderly on reception duty at state was Jack Geddes, a man plausibly rumored to moonlight as a bouncer in a downtown bar. Geddes was often rough with patients, too rough, in Sandra's opinion. He sprang forward from his place behind the reception desk as soon as he registered Orrin Mather's agitation, quickly followed by the duty nurse with her armamentarium of sedatives and needles. The cop, and this was very unusual, placed himself squarely between Orrin and the orderly. "'None of that ought to be necessary,' he said." His voice was Texas with a hint of something foreign. I can escort Mr. Mather wherever you need him to go. Sandra stepped forward, slightly embarrassed that she hadn't spoken first. She introduced herself as Dr. Cole and said, The first thing we'll need to do is an intake interview. Do you understand, Mr. Mather? That happens in a room down the corridor. I'll ask you some questions and take down your information. Then we'll assign you a room of your own. Do you understand? Orrin Mather took a steadying breath and nodded. Geddes and the nurse backed off, Geddes looking a little annoyed. The cop gave Sandra an evaluative look. I'm Officer Bowes, he said. Dr. Cole, can I have a word with you once you get Orrin settled? That might take some time. I'll wait, Bowes said, if you don't mind. And that was the most unusual thing of all. Daytime temperatures in the city had topped 100 degrees Fahrenheit for ten consecutive days now. The state care evaluation facility was air-conditioned, often to the point of absurdity. Sandra kept a sweater in her office, but only a trickle of cool air forced its way through a ceiling grate into the room that was reserved for intake interviews. Orrin Mather was already sweating when Sandra took the chair across the table from him. Morning, Mr. Mather, she said. He relaxed a little at the sound of her voice. You can call me Orrin, ma'am. His eyes were blue and his big lashes looked incongruous in his angular face. A gash in his right cheek was healing into a scar. Most everybody does. Thank you, Orrin. I'm Dr. Cole, 
and we'll be talking together over the next few days. You're the one who decides who keeps me. In a way, that's true. I'll be doing your psychiatric evaluation, but I'm not here to judge you. Do you understand? I'm here to find out what kind of help you need and whether we can give it to you. Oren nodded once, ducking his chin to his chest. You decide whether I go to a state care camp. Not just me. The whole staff is involved, one way or another. But you're the one I talk to. For now, yes. Okay, he said. I get it. 